Hello, I am Ron Baker, and this is Empowered at Last. I am so glad to be here doing episode 001 with you. There are so many things that I look forward to sharing with you over this series. In some ways, I wish we were already at episode 50, but every great conversation begins somewhere. Now, when I was trying to decide what would make sense for this first episode, I decided on a topic called how to set yourself up well. Why? Oh my God, do we live in a wacky time in our world? What day do we not wake up with five sound bites, challenges, confusing revelations about what's going on in a world that's quite wounded. The systems that we've counted on, the health insurance, the government systems, the... I can't imagine that any of you are either not going through some shake-up, some unknown thing that you have to deal with, or that you don't know five other people who are going through some kind of shake-up and challenge. I certainly am among those that lives in that world. The great news, there are distinct ways that we can set ourselves up well. There are distinct things that we can do to nurture ourselves, to support and encourage one another. However, I'll come back to a starting place. The reason I chose this as a topic for episode number one is that everything that we're going to be talking about in upcoming episodes is about how to create a life of meaning, value, and purpose. How to create a life that is intimate with self, intimate with every other facet that you decide to invest in, including all of your relationships. And so, how do we begin to set ourselves up well? I have one important starting place that I'd like you to consider. Every relationship to every other thing that we have in our lives comes out of the relationship that we're having with our self. What do I mean by that? Everything in life flows through you. Your experience is determined by life happening as well as just your own physical self happening. All of life flows through you to determine your experience. If you are in trust of self-value, peace, clarity about your vision, enthusiasm to be investing in the things that you have prioritized in your life, then you're going to create a certain kind of relationship with those things. However, if you haven't gotten clear on your priorities, know what's important to you, have a clear, streamlined life that is focused on things that matter to you, then you're going to have a different kind of relationship to life. I call that survival consciousness. A lot of people that I work with around the world feel trapped within certain limits, and they don't know what to do with those limits, and they feel they're just going through the motions, caught on a hamster wheel, fulfilling the structures, going to jobs, paying bills, but not necessarily clear, passionate, in flow, trusting of their own self-value. We're going to be talking about every one of those things moving forward. And particularly now when we live in a world that is quite challenged and 
out of balance. Why is that? Because all of that collective creation comes out of individuals who are also not in flow and balance and trust and peace and feeling great about themselves. And so it creates a push and pull, a rather, I don't know why this word's coming to me, but cantankerous relationship with a lot of life around each of us. So let's have a simple starting place. Every single one of us is wounded and has some survival consciousness. And every single one of us has depths of greatness. Both exist in you and in me. The question is, do we know how to resolve the challenges and the wounds? Are we focused on the things that are important to us so that we deepen our gifts and our greatness, which comes from getting to know self and expressing self and inspiring self into life, rather than feeling like we just wake up every day and we're reactive and life is happening to us and we have a certain limited set of choices Most people, in my experience, are pretty caught up in all this side and don't know how to resolve it. Don't know how to tap this other side and feel in charge of building a vision, in charge of setting themselves up better and better and better. That is entirely possible. If we start with self, if we just go out to the job, to the relationship, to the other facets of our lives that we're invested in outside the self, if we just become profoundly successful and wealthy, though those are lovely things, it does not guarantee that we will love the flow and the balance and that we will feel in charge of ourselves. I'm going to give you two quick examples. A client of mine who is a CEO of a big company and deals with millions of dollars every day came to me and said, Ron, I can't believe I'm going to say this out loud, but I don't know how I got here. I wake up every day feeling like a fraud. I am so dang successful in the eyes of other people. And I deal with tons of money and make big decisions every single day. But I feel like a fraud. I don't know how I got here. I do not feel in charge of myself. And I certainly don't feel a sense of self-value. Well, I'm thrilled to tell you that after learning certain tools and applying ways to get in touch with himself, there's a very different reality going on for this particular person. A whole different level of self, a whole different level of peace and fulfillment. Same structures, but the relationship you're having with yourself determines all of it. Second example, a friend of mine, I don't think she'd mind if I gave her first name, a friend of mine named Amanda, recently said, I was living the high life. I was in New York City. I was making half million dollars a year. I was driving an Audi A7. I, and this is what she said. I was standing on the corner with my brother one day and I looked at him and I said, do you know anybody who's truly happy and fulfilled? They walked for a couple of blocks in silence 
and he was actually thinking about it, scanning his life, scanning the people he knew, only to reach the conclusion, no, I don't. So this is why I want to add to the beautiful conversation that's going on about how to create peak performances, how to become great leaders and speakers and entrepreneurs, I want to add to that equation simple ways, clear ways to get to know self. To start to treat yourself in ways that are going to build and accumulate a nurtured sense of self, a valued sense of self, a peaceful sense of self. So, I'm going to give a couple of practical ways today that you can begin to integrate in your daily life as you go through a lot of familiar structures this week. The first is, my goodness, we are all really busy people and we have lists of things that we check off every day. Oh my God, have I gotten my 20 things done today that were on my list? I guarantee most people will discover if you look at your list, it was all about outer movements, outer errands, outer goals to accomplish. What is missing from this equation is self as the priority in your own life. So what might you put on your list? Why don't we just start out with, I want to make sure that every day I'm really kind to myself rather than, oh my God, I can't believe I did that and I made that mistake and self-recrimination, self-judgment. These are very familiar things in a very high-pressured world and all of a sudden you add all of these crises that we've had to deal with, hurricanes and fires and governments and decisions and what can I count on from one day to the next. You, no matter what is going on around you, you are in charge of how you treat yourself. I'm in charge of how I treat myself. I have been through a big-ass learning curve of learning to set myself up better and better and better. And more and more of the time, treat myself with kindness, nurturing. We're going to talk about how to deepen that and what that means, but I'd like you to discover if you have any clue what that means. Put it on your checklist. See how many days this week you can check off. I was kind to myself. I was patient with myself. I was nurturing with myself. Because if you don't begin to treat yourself that way, your nervous system can't be calm, fulfilled, peaceful, trusting, you determine every relationship by how you treat yourself. You already said that, Ron. <laughs> Trust me, I could say it over and over and over for this entire 20 minute segment and it would not be overstated. Treat yourself with kindness this week. Oh, that seems just so cosmic and simple and anybody could have are you practicing it? Is it on your list? Do you check it off at the end of every day? Oh yeah, I can think of three times today that I set myself up really well. Let me give you one more in case some of you don't like that one. How about 
On my checklist is making sure I allow myself a learning curve. I'm going to start at whatever level I'm in and I'm going to get better and better at whatever I practice the most. That is true for you as well. Whatever you practice the most is what you are the best at. Now these may seem like simple things. Oh, there is such profundity when you strip it down to simple things. Allow yourself to have a learning curve. Allow yourself to make mistakes. Allow yourself to get better and better, to evaluate how can I get better at whatever it is you're practicing, whatever is required in your life. How do I get better at being kind to myself? Let me have a learning curve with that one too and we can tie both of them together. Bottom line is this in closing for today. You determine much more of the quality of your life than you may have realized. So many things are going on around us. Challenges are coming to the forefront. Well, that's good news because it gives us a chance to begin to nurture everything that's out of balance, everything that's wounded, everything that's hurting and confused in the outer world. Well, how are we going to do that? By practicing it right here with self first. Because the better I've gotten at nurturing myself over the last 25 years of being in this kind of a process, the better and better I have gotten at nurturing and inspiring that in others around me. How do you think we're going to ultimately resolve the big issues on our planet? Nurturing, kindness, treating ourselves well. This is a huge first step that I'm thrilled to share in episode number one. How to set yourself up well? Part one, kindness, learning curve. Have a great week. I hope that you enjoyed today's episode. Before we close, I wanted to encourage a couple of things. Number one is to go to ronbaker.net. There you will find lots of clues for how you can deepen this conversation. You can also find a way to get the booklet, An Essential Guide to the Nine Nurturing Needs. This is going to be a core focus of how we're going to enhance the quality of your life from the inside out, in all the episodes. So I encourage you to go there to get an overview of those nine nurturing experiences that we all seek more than any other thing in our lives. I also want you to get involved in the conversation here. I really would like to talk about the things that are important to you, the things that you're concerned about or excited about, we live in a wacky world that is changing constantly. We need to learn to connect to ourselves, to count on ourselves, and to count on one another. So please either get involved at ronbaker.net or in the Facebook page, which is Empowered at Last with Ron Baker. I look forward to hearing from you. I look forward to deepening this conversation about life, and I close as always, choose well, live fully, and by all means, be good to you. Have a great week.